Courtney, and today we're talking about the country of Mexico. But first, let's get started with the 4-H Pledge. Today we're talking about Estados Unidos Mexicanos, or the United States of Mexico. Our learning targets today are to locate the country of Mexico on a map, learn to appreciate the history and culture of Mexico. This is the flag of Mexico, if you've never seen it before. The population of Mexico is 127.5 million. In the United States, it's 321 million. The symbol on the flag is the Mexican coat of arms. Uh, first of all, it is a golden eagle sitting on a pear cactus eating a rattlesnake. Uh, and this uh, picture has to do with the legend of the founding of Tenochtitlan, or present-day Mexico City. The eagle represents the sun god, the cactus represents the island where the city was located, and the snake stands for wisdom. And Tenochtitlan was a really interesting city. It was set up almost like Venice uh, with all the canals instead of streets. So it was kind of on an island like that as well. Mexico is located south of the United States. The capital is Mexico City. It's bordered by the southeast by Guatemala and Belize. It's the fifth largest country in the Americas, and the Rio Grande serves as the border for the eastern portion with the U.S. This is a picture of the different states of Mexico, and you may have heard of some of them, especially there right in the middle, sort of towards the bottom, Guadalajara. You'll notice that is uh, in the state of Jalisco, uh, so you may recognize that one for sure. Let's talk about the climate of Mexico. Mexico is divided into temperate and tropical zones. Temperate means they have all four seasons like we do. The climate is varied and includes things like tropical rainforests, grasslands, deserts, and even an oasis here or there. Mexico ranks fourth in biodiversity in the world. The history of Mexico is long and varied. Uh, and Mexico was home to indigenous people more than 8,000 years ago and was one of the seven cradles of civilization. Let's start with the Olmec civilization. This is considered the mother culture of Mesoamerica. And of course, Mesoamerica means Middle America. They're known for their ceramics, their sculptures, their pyramid building, and their giant stone heads, which I think kind of remind me of the uh, stone heads on Easter Island out in the Pacific. Next up is the Mayan civilization. Uh, it was established in southern Mexico uh, around 2,000 years ago. It began with agriculture, and they established trade routes all along the country. Eventually, city-states were formed, and the Mayan are known for their achievements in math, astronomy, their complex calendar, which you can see here on the right, and their written histories. Next up in the chronology of Mexican history is the Toltec civilization. Their capital was in modern-day Mexico City. They were influenced by the Olmec, as you can see with their stone heads, although these look a little more modern to me. They were masters of iron and stonework, and they had a polytheistic religion centered around Quetzalcoatl. Polytheistic means more than one god. So poly means more than one, and theistic is god or deity. They overthrew the Mayan culture and eventually fell victim to the Aztec, which is the one that maybe we're most familiar with. Uh, earlier, I mentioned that the uh, capital of Tenochtitlan kind of looked like Venice is what historians think with uh, streets of uh, instead of paved streets, they had canals. And so this is an artist picture of what they think uh, that capital city looked like. The Aztec ranged from the 1100s until they were colonized by the Spanish in the 1500s. They were originally poor and nomadic, which means they traveled around and didn't have uh, permanent dwellings, uh, until they formed their capital at Tenochtitlan in 1325, about 200 years before the Spanish would arrive. The Aztecs built up alliances and conquered rivals, leading them to have a civilization mixed with various cultures. They were advanced in engineering, architecture, art, math, metalwork, sculpture, picture writing, and astronomy, and they too had a calendar. You can really see how large that pyramid is when you realize the little dots going up the right-hand side are people, so it's a pretty large pyramid. 
Cortes, who is pictured here, was a Spanish conquistador who led the group who caused the eventual fall of the Aztec Empire and basically led the colonization of the entire area for Spain. Many of the indigenous people in the area died in fighting and from disease. Okay, let's talk about the Spanish language. And if I was betting, I would say you probably know most of these. Uh, Spanish is the most common language in Mexico, but there's actually no official language. Uh, however, there are still almost 70 different native languages spoken in different parts of the country. So let's go over a few of our common Spanish words. A greeting like hello is, of course, hola. Uh, to say goodbye is adios. Uh, thank you is gracias. You're welcome is de nada. And of course, delicious is delicioso. Let's go over some interesting facts you may not know about Mexico. Most religious people in Mexico are Christian, and the vast majority of those are Roman Catholic. The traditional religion was the Aztec and Mayan religions. Uh, and so we mentioned earlier Quetzalcoatl, and I think Quetzalcoatl is a really interesting part of the Mexican uh, uh, traditional religions. Uh, first off, this is a drawing of what he is described as looking like. He was a feathered serpent deity worshipped by the Aztec. He was the god of wind and learning, which I think is pretty cool. He's a pretty fierce looking guy, but he's also the god of learning. And as someone who does a lot of teaching, I can really appreciate that. He wears a breastplate made of conch shells, like from the ocean. Uh, and he, uh, this was probably worn by religious rulers because they were found in burial sites. So they have found breastplates made of conch shells. Uh, and the conch shells symbolize the powerful patterns found in the ocean. Uh, and I did want to talk a little bit about the Day of the Dead or Dia de los Muertos. Uh, and if you have seen this movie, you probably know a little bit already about the Day of the Dead. It's not really meant to be a spooky holiday and it's definitely not Halloween. It dates back actually over 3,000 years and became popular during the time of the Aztecs. When the Spanish arrived in the 1500s, though, the celebration evolved to incorporate um, parts of Christianity, such as celebrating uh, the Day of the Dead on November 1st and 2nd, instead of its original celebration in the summertime. Uh, so the Day of the Dead basically is a three-day festival to celebrate our loved ones who have passed away. On October 31st, which we know is Halloween, but is All Hallows' Eve, children make an altar to invite the angelitos, or the spirits of dead children, to visit. November 1st is All Saints' Day, and it's when adult spirits visit. The three-day celebration is filled with marigolds, which are viewed as the flowers of the dead, pan de muertos, or bread of the dead, sugar skulls, tissue paper decorations, and other traditional foods and decorations. Families often make colorful altars in their homes that honor their deceased loved ones. These altars are decorated with flowers, candles, maybe their loved one's favorite foods, and of course, pan de muerto, which is um, a slightly sweet bread made this time of year. Dia de los Muertos is known for vibrant colors. Uh, yellow represents the sun and unity because under the sun we're all the same. Uh, if you see white decorations that represent spirit, hope, and purity. Red is blood and life. Purple is mourning and grief and suffering. Pink signifies happiness. And the marigolds, um, people spread these petals uh, around uh, to guide the spirits of loved ones to the celebration. So you probably saw a lot of marigold petals in um, the Coco movie. The altars we talked about earlier, those are called ofrendas, uh, and they're adorned with lots of decorations. You'll see here a, a photo of an ofrenda uh, for someone's loved one. And the, the tray there, you can see there's a photo of the person who's passed away. And then in front of that photo, you would see that's some of the pan de muertos, the delicious bread. Here's a list of our sources if you would like some more information. There's even a few coloring pages if you want to make your own sugar skull. Our art project today, if you picked up a kit, is making your own tissue paper flowers that you can use to decorate uh, just in general or if you would like to celebrate Dia de los Muertos this year. Hi, my name is Emmy, and I'm the junior leader of the Arts and Culture Club in Clark County. So today I'm going to show you how to make those paper flowers. So one of the cool things about this is you only need a few things. You need scissors, string, paper, and this is optional, but if you want, you can use pipe cleaners to make a stem. You're going to need about three or four pieces of tissue paper, and you can mix and match colors, or you can just pick a color you like. So the first thing you're going to do is fold this in half this direction. 
And this is just to get a reference to cut. So we're gonna cut it down the middle. And then take all of these layers and stack them on top of each other. After you have it here, you're gonna to go to the bottom of your um, tissue paper and fold it over. And we're gonna do this about an inch. You could maybe do a little less, but I wouldn't do any more than an inch. And then take your tissue paper, flip it on its back, and fold that over. And then flip it again, and fold. And you're gonna do that until you folded the entire piece of tissue paper all the way to the end. So now that you have it all done to here and it doesn't have to look perfect, you're gonna take the edges and fold them up in this way and kind of line them up so that both sides come to the same height. And then take that and kind of make a crease right there. And then wherever you put that crease, take your piece of string and tie it right there. After you tied a tight knot right there, you can go ahead and cut off the extra string. And after you've done that, you're going to cut the ends so that there are petals. There you go. And that's just garbage. So the next thing we're going to do is take this and kind of spread it all out. And um, go to one side first. And you're going to pull apart each layer of tissue paper. And you're gonna do the same thing with the other side. But you can also use pipe cleaners to add a stem to it as well. That's all for today. If you'd like more information on how to get involved with Lincoln County 4-H, check out our website at lincoln4h.org. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.